The design ops implementation is very new at IKEA, and in order to understand why design ops was created, we need to go back quite a bit. About three years ago, IKEA decided to undergo a great, enormous digital transformation. As a design team, we've been part of this transformation. We've been hard pressed to be able to keep up with all of the demands that we had. Uh, and that we still have. Design Ops at IKEA does a lot of very different things. We do everything from design maturity work to how do we assess skills in our team. And I think it's important to us because we want to be effective, we want to create world-class experiences, and we want to build a world-class team. I see Design Ops as a, a way of collectively improving the design process by standardizing tools, standardizing ways of working, and ensuring that our designers have the best possible prerequisites to do their job. Design Ops is an extension of the DevOps movement that we've had uh, for a while now. And DevOps is a growing um, set of standards and processes for doing high quality uh, products within uh, a larger ecosystem. Design Ops is, for me, the extension of that philosophy into design. And so uh, the design system is where DevOps and Design Ops meet. It's a, a set of uh, components that can be used to, to increase the efficiency of the overall engineering process. There is one really major thing that, that happened uh, right at the beginning when, when we started up Design Ops, and that is the fact that des the design system uh, has been created. IKEA has previously attempted uh, a lot of different design systems, uh, none of which were actually collaborative and, and broad enough to support the entire uh, IKEA group. And now we do have one. The design system, it's not only you know, a couple of design guidelines on how buttons should look or you know, the margins of things. Many th times people think that that's the case. It's more about a design system as like a representation of who we are as a company. So for example, visual identity is baked into that. Interaction design is baked into that. Motion design is baked into that. Traditionally, tone of voice is not normally included in most traditional design systems, but I guess this is not your typical company. And it's really exciting because IKEA has this iconic sort of tone of voice that's tied up in the brand. We wanted to make it an essential part of the digital customer experience. Like the way we speak to our customers, the messaging, how we how we address certain situations that occur only digitally. It is uh, owned by the design operations team. It is maintained by the design operations team and we are actually globally distributing it uh, or starting to distribute it, which is something amazing. Uh, we have not been able to do that before. Uh, we have not been able to uh, support all of the teams before and we are doing that now. And it creates not only a positive vibe, but also hope for the future. So if we're talking about designing for the many people, you know, design system is a, is a perfect representation of that because it has everything in it. And that also means that designers who are working on products can focus on you know, delivering values and looking at the, at the user journeys instead of trying to kind of reinvent the wheel every time. Design ops is a buzzword uh, in many cases. In other cases, like for us at IKEA here, it is not. Uh, we do truly see a need of elevating this part of the craft that is rarely talked about into something different to relieve strain on designers and enable them to do their work. My dream for this department and for this team is actually to make sure that they are uh, global. They are global, they are supporting in everything and that we ensure that we are enabling people to do their jobs and nothing else. We are we're, we're not the solution providers, we are the enablers.